Man, are you gonna be glad that you clicked on this video? <laughs> I had this whole thing written as the Michaela story being the top story because it was everywhere, all over the internets all week. Michaela, Noguera, and Mascara Gate. But I actually have a story that tops that. <laughs> At least in my mind, I am like, holy radio edit. At least in my mind, and it has to do with the form of bankruptcy and some of the things that went into the filing this past week. I had a little bit of tea for you, and then the tea just got boiling this morning, and I'm so glad I waited till Saturday morning to film because I wouldn't have had this if I had filmed on Friday like I normally do. So if you want to know the Morphe stuff, if you don't know what's going on with Michaela, and I've got a few more stories and product releases and all of that, hang tight. We're getting into all of it right now. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to What's Up in Makeup, where we talk about everything that is happening in the beauty space this past week. Oh my gosh, we are starting with Morphe. So... <sighs> The way that this bankruptcy is working is that every time a lawyer submits something, it is uploaded. And I have been reading through every single one of them, the boring ones, which there are many, and the few very interesting ones. So this was the most interesting one that happened before this morning. This has to do with the contracts that people are saying are still open, but Forma Brands or any other company that's under Forma Brands, Morphe, Jaclyn Cosmetics, Playa Hair Care, a Lipstick Queen, any of those companies, any outstanding contracts. There has been a new document that has been uploaded. It says that 14 different entities have been placed on a contract rejection list where Forma is like, no, these contracts, they should not be paid. They're not good contracts, I guess. Three of these 14 entities listed are Jeffree Star, Shelby Wild, and Sister Sister LLC. Shelby Wild, if you do not know, was the owner of Playa Hair Care before Forma took them over and bought them and now Shelby is suing them for $15 million because she said that Forma did not incubate them the way an incubator company should. So Shelby is on that list. And then we have Sister Sister LLC, who is owned by, of course, James Charles. So that has formally been placed in the documents of something to talk about at the next court hearing on February 8th. Very interesting, some of the other people that are on this list, this contract rejection list. We have Scooter Braun's Ithaca Media Ventures. And if that sounds familiar, you might be a Swifty because Scooter Braun was associated with all of the Taylor Swift, uh, him owning her music, if all of that. Well, Scooter Braun's Ithaca Media Ventures is associated with Ariana Grande. Also on this list is the former CEO of Forma and the chairman of Key Sunglasses. His name is Miles McCormick. He was the CEO of Forma Brands from August of 2019 to January of 2022. But what makes this even more interesting is that another person that is on here is the current CEO. His name is Eric Hole. So God knows why they are on this list as far as a contract rejection. I am, I wish I knew. I wish I knew the intimate details. Hopefully we'll find out more on February 8th about what's going on with these people. Now, right before filming, another document dropped. I was like, well, I'll check and see and see if there's... I am so glad I did because I honestly, we talked about this before, that people had to submit objections to anything that Forma was saying, anything that happened in the previous hearings before February 1st. And I was like, everybody seems to be getting along in the courtroom. There probably won't be any objections. Well, there is an objected, objection and it is very interesting. It is an objection from Oxygen Development LLC. Oxygen Lab. Okay, we have to put this on because this is this is where the T is. So Oxygen has put in an objection. The Cure Amount page, if you remember that, it's basically, from what I understand, the page where the brand that's filing for bankruptcy puts all the contracts they currently have open and things that they'll be breaking the contract if they don't pay for. So they have all these amounts listed. They had listed for Oxygen a Cure Amount of $10.70. And Oxygen was like, ho, 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 no, absolutely. 
absolutely not. Oxygen says that Morphe and Jaclyn Cosmetics owe them about $197,000 dollars with about $170,000 of that in product that has already gone to the company. So they were like, we, they ordered the stuff, we made the stuff, we shipped the stuff in a timely manner and they never paid us for it. But these aren't for current Jaclyn Cosmetics. Oh no, these orders were from 2019. Yes, these orders were for Jaclyn's original lipstick launch. The hairy lipsticks! The hairy lipsticks! We have the purchase orders, we have the receipts, we have all the stuff for the hairy lipsticks. Now you remember after the whole Jaclyn Cosmetics hairy lipstick debacle, she ended up giving everybody refunds. I had purchased a few of them, I got my refund. Some people said they didn't get a refund, but it seemed like most people, if not everybody, got their refund. Apparently, Jaclyn Cosmetics never paid the lab that made them. Listed in the document are the 20 shades of the original Jaclyn lipstick formula. There's also four shades of Morphe's Dimension Effect highlight sticks that launched in, I believe, October of 2019. That's when the first YouTube videos are popping up for me, as well as the Fluidity Color Correcting Concealer in green, pink, and what they call C dot two six five which is another shade as well as their eye primer just because i like numbers i added some stuff up because i was nosy and curious and this is what i found is that this was just the lipstick like formula this was just the lipstick itself so the unit carton the labels and the primary component were not provided by oxygen each lipstick cost 96 cents they spent about two hundred thousand dollars on the lipstick bullet for about two hundred fifteen thousand lipsticks the idea for my brand is to create luxury products okay that are beautiful amazing feel awesome in your hands feel expensive but for an affordable price, which makes me so excited that you can buy three of my lipsticks for $49 because there's luxury lipsticks out there that are more than $49. Now this is where it gets real hairy, literally. So do you remember back a while ago in 2019 when Cassandra Bankson put one of the little things, the little fibery things that she pulled out of the lipstick, she put on her microscope and she was like, this is animal hair. She's like 99% sure this is animal hair. And then people on Reddit figured out from Jacqueline's launch video that this was probably Oxygen Labs, most likely. They didn't know. Now we know it definitely is. Here's a little clip from Cassandra's video because I think she presents it so, so well. Dogs and cats have been found inside of the cosmetic manufacturer's facility that Jaclyn Hill used to create her cosmetics, allegedly. So as you know, I found hairs, again, 99.9% .9 positive they're animal. The only 0.1% that I am not positive is because I don't want to be sued. Some people on Reddit right here identified Oxygen Labs or Oxygen Development inside of Florida as the potential or the alleged <laughs> manufacturer of Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. Now, there has been a lot of complaints. There, there have been some complaints from the FDA. Again, the Food and Drug Administration investigated in, I believe it was 2011 or 2012. I again found this off of a Twitter account and then I went to the FDA government website to confirm this. And it looks like there were some issues about this specific development place not meeting quality control. So like I said a second ago, I'm trying to connect the dots. And the thing about connecting dots that aren't already connected is you could end up with the wrong picture, but I'm gonna try really, 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 really freaking hard to connect the dots correctly so we can have an accurate picture. This is what I see from this. First, it does not look like the Jaclyn lipsticks were old. Remember people were saying they were probably just sitting around for a really long time? It doesn't look like that. It looks like from order date to launch was about two months. It really, it was like April to June. Of course, there's no guarantee that these are the lipsticks that she sold. Maybe this was a preemptive restock, but that makes absolutely no sense to me because it does look like their turnaround time is pretty fast. So this looks like, it doesn't make any sense that this wouldn't be the original lipsticks that were hairy that were launched. And like we said a second ago, it does look like these came from the lab where people saw animals walking around and they had previous violations and all of that. And Cassandra Bankson with her microscope and Rob Christie with her microscope and, you know, pretty pastel please pulling the metal out and everything. Like all of that was, looks like it was from oxygen. Hello. 
editing Jen here, realized after I stopped filming that there were other things that just didn't make sense. So I have been talking with my friend who's in the industry for like the past hour and a half digging through this stuff and I found some very interesting things. First, I wanna address why do I care so much about a launch that happened in 2019. I think it's the lie of it. And it's also about solving the puzzle and finding out what really happened. You know, like it just, it's fascinating to me how this all went down and the things that we didn't know about Jacqueline's lipstick launch. So this is what I learned in the past couple of hours. Are you ready for this? It looks like Jacqueline ordered her lipsticks or Morphe ordered the lipsticks because Morphe was the one paying for them on April 2nd of 2019. Jacqueline in her My Lipsticks video where she talked about all the issues flashed this document. This was done at the lab, okay, at Oxygen. That's where this was done. The dates on this are May 15th and May 16th. I looked up and found out that the launch date is May 30th for these lipsticks. So we are 15, 14 days out from launch and they're still at the lab. So then, we look on the invoices where Oxygen is disputing how much Forma owes them. These different invoices show when the product was shipped and how much was owed. The dates on these lipsticks being shipped are between May 20th and May 25th. So starting on May 20th, going to the 25th, they have batches of these lipsticks getting on a truck and driving from California to Florida. And if you're not familiar with the geography of the United States, that is literally the opposite side of our very giant country. Now, what I found fascinating about this is Jacqueline released her launch video for the lipsticks on May 23rd. So that means when Jacqueline launched her video, chances are not a single lipstick was in the distribution center. So how did she get the PR package that she shows in that video? They had to have been a different batch. They were not the same lipsticks. They were not from the same batch as the ones the customer got. Other issue with this is that when was their time to quality control? when you get the lipsticks in the distribution center. There was no time. There was zero time to open up the packages and make sure they were okay. I don't know what standard practice is for lipsticks. I don't know if they check all 200,000, but I have a feeling they didn't even open any of the boxes to see if they were right. They just shipped them out. They didn't even order them until April 2nd. So they had from April 2nd until they shipped on May 20th to make 200,000 lipsticks. How is that gonna work for you? How are you gonna make a quality product in that amount of time? Because traditionally, you can't even order the raw materials until the purchase order is in, right? That doesn't make any sense. So they couldn't even order the raw materials until after April 2nd. So they couldn't even start production probably for, they probably made 200,000 lipsticks in like a week, maybe two. We wonder why there were issues with this launch. We wonder why. I am just so curious, why did it need to happen this fast? Why couldn't they take the time and maybe launch at holiday? Have them launch in October instead of June? Why did they have, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get why they did that. All right, that's the extra I got for you. Let me jump back into what's up in makeup that I filmed earlier because I do have a little bit more to tell you about this topic. But what kills me about this is the next orders that Morphe placed. So they came out with these highlight sticks in October, right? The Jaclyn lipsticks launched in June. So they had July, August, September, October, four months from when Jaclyn's lipsticks were all hairy and then they're coming out with highlighter sticks from the same lab knowing that it's a contaminated lab? What? Now, to be fair, though, and to be very clear, the purchases that were are outstanding from Morphe are from 2021 and 2022. Let's just give Morphe the benefit of the doubt, just in case, because, you know, just in case. So let's say they find out Jacqueline's lipsticks, they're all hairy and contaminated and awful, and they're like, oh, crap, we can't work with this company anymore. We can't work with this lab anymore. We're going to take our business elsewhere. So they go to another lab, and then four months later, they pop out some highlighter sticks with a different lab. And then two years later, they're like, well, it's been a little while while, you know, they've cleaned up their act. We're going to go back to what's it called? Oxygen. We're going to go back to oxygen. See, to me, that doesn't make any sense. 
The only way that would make sense is if the Highlighter formula is just a stock formula from another lab. But then in order to go back to oxygen with that formula, they would have to purchase that formula from the other lab and then give it to oxygen to then start making it unless they just completely reformulated them. I feel like it's more likely in my mind that Morphe, because there was no form at this point, Morphe knew that Jaclyn Cosmetics lipsticks were contaminated and they launched those freaking highlighter sticks anyway because they already had money in them. That's what I think. That's my opinion, allegedly. The other bit is that we've been talking around in circles on YouTube about whether Jaclyn ever owned Jaclyn Cosmetics. And really all we knew is that Jaclyn doesn't currently own Jaclyn Cosmetics because the court papers say that they are a former parent company and that Jaclyn is not an investor at this moment. But what we didn't know is if Jaclyn ever owned her company. So we know for a fact that Morphe purchased the lipstick bullets for Jaclyn Cosmetics, which leads me to believe that Jaclyn never owned Jaclyn Cosmetics even back to that original lipstick launch even though she said multiple times that it was her brand and she paid for it out of her pocket and it was all hers and this is my brand reveal video because it's my brand and it literally has my name on it that I am launching a brand that I am so proud to be the owner of, I cannot even begin to tell you but mom you create whatever you want you deserve to have something of your own in this line that people know, like they are buying into a family business when they purchase from Jaclyn Cosmetics. I want to address some of the issues that my customers are having with my first launch of my brand, Jaclyn Cosmetics, and doing a very in-depth investigation to figure out exactly what's going on so that I can give you the most informed information as a brand owner. I take full responsibility for what happened, you guys. Like it was my company and it was my name. Yes, I had business partners. It's like I was forced to hire on people. I was forced to get investors just because it's like, whoa, this is snowballing and it's getting so big and it's so exciting, you know? So that is the update on Morphe. Of course, I'm going to keep my eye on everything and I'm going to keep you posted if I see anything else make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss what's up and make up next week because who knows what's going to develop all right we don't need the hat anymore sleuthing over but I do want to talk about the Michaela situation that happened this past week before I get started, just to make sure we're all on the same page, the false advertising has always been a thing. It's always been a thing in the beauty space. It's nothing new. But does that make it okay? I don't personally think so. We have come to an understanding that we can't always believe everything we see in an ad for a company. Their job is to sell us stuff. And sometimes they may, you know, kind of hide the truth a little bit or twist things around a little bit or maybe put some false lashes on with some a mascara ad. Like this is nothing new and you know, we're kind of used to it at this point. But what if the ad is presented like a review from somebody that you trust? So Michaela Naguera, if you're not familiar with her, she's huge on TikTok. She's been huge on TikTok since TikTok started exploding in 2020, right? So Michaela has been kind of, um, people are, are concerned about her honesty. They've been starting to ask questions about whether she's using filters on foundation reviews and stuff like that for a little while now. And now shit really hit the fan because of this L'Oreal mascara review. So there's this new L'Oreal mascara that came out like two months ago and it's a new version of their telescopic mascara, right? So Michaela stitches another video of somebody applying the mascara. Then she she shows the mascara already on one eye and then applies a first coat to the other eye. Then she goes off camera, comes back, and the mascara is supposedly more than one coat and it looks really full and she says it changed her life, all of that stuff. Turns out that this was a sponsored post for L'Oreal. We know this because there is very teeny tiny little print that says L'Oreal partner. It is actually more apparent than the person she stitched, but I digress. It was still too freaking small. And it also had hashtag L'Oreal partner in the caption, but she never says it in the actual video. She makes it look like it's a review. Look how long and lengthened my lashes look. You, li this literally just changed my life. This looks like false, li this is how, what? <laughs> it's this L'Oreal telescopic lift. Look at the wand. Okay, so basically I'm taking the curved side and I'm going root to tip and I'm satin to coat the lashes. And then once you've done that, you flip the brush to the side and you use the hook comb to basically separate. This is one coat. Okay, I'm gonna add a second. Look at the length. Do you see that? I am speechless. 
and I'm not sure anyone's gonna ever be able to compete with this mess. And what people noticed, what I noticed and a bunch of people noticed is that she actually physically in the after, like after she applied a couple of coats, that she physically had more lashes than she had before she cut away suggesting that she had applied false lashes on top of the mascara to enhance the effect. Now this is where it gets a little bit sticky. So there was another influencer who was huge. I think she has like 12 million followers or something ridiculous. Her name is Maddie Lewis and she came on TikTok defending Michaela. I'm gonna play a little clip of it, but honestly it makes me so like, like it makes me nauseous watching this, but I will put it up just so you can see a little piece of it. Why are you guys hating on somebody for lying? Granted, maybe she's lying, maybe she's not. So what? Even if she did put false eyelashes on, why does that matter? I know it's false advertising, but isn't everything false advertising? Isn't everything technically kind of lying? Just a little bit? Don't get me wrong. Lying sucks, but everyone does it. Especially when it comes to social media, and especially when it comes to... Like my blood started boiling. I have been in this space for 10 years, working so hard to make sure I'm providing the best, most detailed, honest reviews that I possibly can with experience with the products, with ingredients, with all of this, so you can make educated purchasing decisions. And then here comes these people coming into our space and like, freaking throwing it to the wind and being like, oh, you know, it's amazing. When really it's just fake lashes. I mean, of course, Michaela is not the first person to possibly deceive people in an ad for a product, but it's just really disheartening to those of us that are in the space that it is our full-time jobs where we feed our families from this job that people are kind of muddying our waters. You know what I'm saying? It looks bad on everybody. But what pisses me off the most about Maddie's video is that she's basically saying that it's okay to lie, that everybody lies, it's not that big of a deal, which we cannot normalize this. We absolutely we cannot normalize this kind of thing because most of us that are doing this really are doing this for the right reasons. What's most irritating to me about this particular post is that the mascara looked great on its own. It didn't even need the extra help, uh, <laughs> if that's what she did, cause you know, legal, uh, but it, it didn't even need extra help. She didn't even need to do that. Like it looked great just as it was. So I have a story connected to this. I had my first tweet uh, to go over a million views over this particular topic. And I've been on Twitter since 2015. That has never happened to me before. And it has been an interesting experience because most of the people quote tweeting me being upset about this are saying, it's just mascara. It's not a big deal. You should know better. It's just advertising. Why are you taking this so seriously? All of that. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do something I've never done on this channel. We're going to Katie Porter this. Bitch. All right. So here's the point. All right. There it is. That's the point. And how much you get the point and care about the point has to do with where you fall on the spectrum, how close you are to here. The point is false advertising. How much does false advertising affect you personally or somebody that you know? If it doesn't affect you, you're going to be over here. And you're going to say it doesn't freaking matter because you don't base your purchasing decisions on advertising. Maybe you base your purchasing decisions on trusted influencers, but not on sponsored posts. You're here closer to the point. Okay. You get it. But if you trust influencers in spending your money, you get it. You get, I don't, that's a number nine, <laughs> but you get the point and you are not happy. You are mad. Okay, and you have no legs. You have legs now. You're mad because you get the point. Because a lot of us do, I personally do trust influencers as far as my purchasing decisions. So I don't wanna spend my money on something that's crap and then realize that the person lied to me. It's happened to me before and it's upsetting. We work hard for our money and it sucks to know that somebody we trusted lied to us. But if you're this dude over here, then you don't get the point. You see what I'm saying? Because you're too far removed from it. Yeah? Sorry, I was an elementary school teacher. That's how I express myself. <laughs> but this is the thing. Do I think Michaela should be burned at the stake for this? Absolutely not. There are so much worse things that people in our space have done that Michaela has not even close to have done, all right? 
all she did was she was some, she was deceptive. Was it cruddy? Yeah. But I think us in the beauty space, we like to classify people into good people and bad people when there is a spectrum for everybody. All of us have things that are not perfect about us, things that other people might disapprove of, but that's part of being human. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think Michaela's a terrible person. I think she made a cruddy choice that reflected on people, but I don't even dislike her <laughs> for it. You know what I mean? I'm just kind of like, girl, what'd you do? Like, why'd you do that? But I don't even dislike her. And I don't think she deserves the vitriol and the hate that she's getting. And I don't think it's as serious as a lot of the things that have happened in our beauty space, especially over the past few years. I don't feel like Michaela should be chased off the platform. I think that she should still continue creating content. I hope that she does. Just maybe just taking this into consideration for future choices, that's all. But what I hope for our space, what my, my true hope is, is that we as a community can say just this is not good and it should not be normalized. That's it. No crucifying, no burning at the stake. Just let's normalize honest reviews and celebrate creators that we love that are honest. That being said, if you have a creator that you love, that you trust for reviews, leave their name down in the comment section down below of somebody that you watch regularly and enjoy. That way we can all find new creators to watch and decide whether we trust them for ourselves. Y'all, it just goes on and on and on. <laughs> We have one more really big story to talk about, and it's the Tarte brand trip situation. And I have my opinions. I'm going to save them for the end. But people are mad at Tarte for taking influencers on this brand trip. The articles linked down below have all of the story in there. One of them says that they took 50 influencers to Dubai for three days. There were two major reasons why people were upset. The first one was inclusivity. It, they had zero people who were presenting as male on their trip. They also had very, very few people of color on the trip. The second one was the economic aspect of it. And there is a breakdown by a very unlikely source. I saw this person breaking down the Tarte brand trip. I'm like, this person does not look like they're in the makeup space. It is a man named Jack McGuire and he's part of Barstool Sports. I don't know how he got mixed up in this, but it was a very interesting breakdown. There's something going on with this Tarte trip. Now for the influencers that went on this trip, the ladies, I don't blame them, go ahead, get your back. But the economics of this trip do not make sense. All of these ladies all flew first class on Emirates to Dubai. And then on top of it, they all got to bring a plus one. If you wanna fly first class from New York City to Dubai, it's gonna cost you around $22,000, all right? Where are they staying? Oh, Rich Carlton. And this is one of those hotels, you can't even find how much money it costs to stay there. You have to like call somebody because it's like they know rich people ain't booking it on Expedia. And they're all staying in these phenomenal villas too. How much money do you think one of these villas goes for a night? I'm gonna say 5K. That's probably being generous. So for each influencer, it's 5,000 a night. They'll probably stay for three nights, 15,000 for the hotel alone, then 45,000 for the flights, Ubers, whatnot. So you're about $65,000 in the whole. That's Harvard education, by the way, uh, for one influencer. And then you times that by 10. And also, we're talking about people that don't get out of bed for nothing, all right? These aren't nobodies. This is Alex Earl. You think Alex, Alex Earl probably is getting like a Patrick Mahomes contract for just going. Where are they getting this money from? I don't know what's gonna happen to me after I press publish on this video. This is a heroic act that I just did. Heroic journalisming, okay? But there's something going on here and I won't stay quiet. Glossy actually went to the founder of Tarte Cosmetics. Her name is Maureen Kelly and asked her about the accusations. And this is what Maureen said. She said, quote, every day brands make decisions about how to spend their marketing budgets. For some companies, that means a huge Super Bowl commercial or a multi-million dollar contract with a famous athlete or celeb. We've never done traditional advertising and instead we invest in building relationships and building up communities. 
She also mentioned that they did partner with Sephora Middle East in order to make this trip happen. For the, so the thing with this is, for me, is it's disappointed but not surprised in the lack of inclusivity. I think Tarte is pretty much known for that. So again, disappointed, it's not okay, but not surprised. The other thing is the economy part. Tarte has been doing these brand trips for so freaking long. For as long as I have known that Tarte has existed, they have been doing brand trips. I don't think it has anything to do with like the current economy or trying to make anybody feel bad or any of this, I really do believe what the owner is saying. It's like, dude, this is how we spend our marketing budget. All companies have marketing budgets. This is the way we chose to spend ours. And I, I personally don't see a problem with that, but maybe I'm missing the point. Maybe this is, maybe this is me over here. <laughs> Maybe I don't get it because I'm over here. It's definitely possible. We're all over here on some issues. I guess they could, instead of doing these brand trips, lower their prices some so that people could afford it in this economy, but they're a business. They don't, they're not, businesses aren't in business to have feelings, unfortunately, and I don't think they care. I don't think most brands care about the individual person and lowering prices for them because it's a bad economy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think this is abnormal. Is it okay? Like, would it be nice if they lower the prices? Absolutely. But I think that that's not what traditionally is done, so I'm not surprised. Again, it's disappointed, but not surprised. This was actually really funny. So on their TikTok, they were poking fun at themselves. I'm gonna play the little TikTok for you. If you're just listening, I'll kind of dictate what's happening. So there's a person in a tart shape tape costume, like a, like a mascot costume, and they're walking into an empty room and the caption says, POV, you show up at work, but the marketing team spent all of our money on a brand trip. <laughs> And I just love that they're able to poke fun at themselves. And I really hope that other brands start doing this too. At least trying to be like, look, we recognize, we hear you. In case you were curious, the purpose of the trip is to promote an upcoming foundation. It is the Maracuja Juicy Glow Foundation. It is set to launch on February 10th. If you are interested in the foundation, they do have a place where you can sign up for notifications for launch. Uh, it's over on their website right now, but I'm super curious, like, where are you here? Are you like hating on Tarte and think that this was the most BS thing that they could do? Or are you more like me over here, away from the point? <laughs> I would love to know your thoughts. Last story in top news is just a little shorty one about Kristen Bell's Happy Dance skincare line. They are unfortunately, or they already have unfortunately gone out of business. It was a CBD skincare line and they had like moisturizers and bath bombs and stuff like that. They posted on Instagram, not this past Friday, but the Friday before, quote, we're sorry to be the bearer of bad news. This truly is the last dance because the Happy Dance products that you've come to love are being discontinued. If you did fall in love with some of these products, uh, unfortunately they're no longer available on the website but they are still available to buy in store at some CVS, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Home Goods, and Ulta Beauty locations just while supplies last. Since we're all into talking about parent companies here, let's just kind of go a little bit into that just for a second. So they do have a parent company. The parent company is called Kronos Group. They posted their 2022 second quarter financial results and then now they're closing the brand. So that makes me think that that's probably part of the reason why they closed it is because it wasn't doing very well. And they said that they are shifting their focus from CBD products to ones with THC in them. This includes their brand called Spinach, which offers THC gummies only to Canadian residents. And they do hope to offer those to US residents, quote, once regulations permit. So we'll keep an eye on that because I do think regulations will permit eventually. We will see. We'll keep our eye out for spinach, I guess. Never thought I'd say that on What's Up and Makeup. <laughs> All right, my friend, we have a much shorter product report for you this week, but some very notable things that were launched. First, let's talk about the Jones Road Bronzer, $35 each, seven shades. They say it is, silk, is a silky powder that adds instant warmth to the skin, as bronzers do. It's sheer and buildable. It can be used to give the skin a natural tint or for color correction. And somehow, I don't know how, I ended up on Jones Road PR, so I'm supposed to be getting this in PR. I don't know how that happened, but I will let you know how it goes. Next one, this is exciting. This isn't launched yet, but I think it's super cool. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Matte Bl Beauty Blush Wands. Four shades are gonna be available soon. You can sign up for their wait list on their website now. Beautiful here from Lethal Cosmetics. We're gonna talk about their charity collection. Four four pan palettes, they're $30.60 each, or you can buy single shadows for $7.50 each. They're also selling empty palettes for $8. 
$8 each. 100% of the profits are gonna go to the charity that matches the palette, which is super cool. And I was looking at these little eyeshadows and I was like, oh, these look like the Stila ones that I used to love back in the day. They were like $20, $20 or $25 for an eyeshadow like that. And I couldn't afford them. There's no freaking way I was buying them. But then I found them at TJ Maxx when they were discontinuing them and I got them for like $1.50 each and I ended up collecting as many as I could and I had so much fun with them. And then I ended up not liking them because they were really hard to like make match on your eye. But now I'm rambling because it's ADHD. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. But point is they remind me of the Stila shadows. I think that's pretty cool. I think they're beautiful. Hopefully they apply like more evenly than the Steel of Shadows did. And in influencer news, Robert Welsh is collaborating with Ciate London. He posted on his social media, Ciate posted on social media that the launch is January 31st. First, Robert says it's a bundle of his favorite products and they retail for 102 pounds, but he is going to sell them with Ciate for 35 pounds, which is he says is about 65% off. You can sign up for notifications again on Ciate's website. Congratulations, Robert. Always love to see people in the beauty space doing fun collabs. Moving over to Sephora, this is fun and completely unnecessary and I think I love it. So this is the Kajah Jelly Charm Glazed Lip Stain and Blush with Keychain. $25, did we need a keychain on our blush and lip stain? I did not think I needed that, but it is darn cute. I think a better question might be, why don't we need a keychain on our blush, blush and lip stain? Why, I mean, I, does that make you wanna buy it when you see that it's on a keychain? I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence on that one. Two new lip products from Patrick Starr's One Size. We have the Lip Snatcher Waterproof Precision Lip Liner, $14, 10 shades. It does look like a pencil sharpeny guy. And then we have something I think is really smart. I, I don't know how much I've seen this. I think this is very smart. The Lip Snatcher Hydrating Liquid Lipstick and Lip Gloss Duo. So it's got that dual sided thing, $28. There's four high shine shades and four shimmer finishes. I love the packaging. I love the concept, really cute. They say that it is a velvet, flex cream that delivers a velvet matte finish and high coverage while the cushion gloss offers an all day moisturizing power 3d high shine and a cushion like non-sticky feel and they can be worn separately or together like i've seen eyeshadows like this but i don't know like i can't remember watch there be like a million of them but i can't remember lip products being launched like this before. You have to tell me. There has to have been. I just can't think of it right now. And then we have K-Skin, the IELT Lip Balm SPF 30. There are now two tinted shades available. $14 there. It does have SPF 30, sea moss, and aloe stem cells. Then we have four different brands launching things soon at Sephora, starting with Kosas, the Glow IV Vitamin Infused Skin Illuminating Enhancer, $38, 10 shades, Really nice gradient there, really loving that. They call it a clean vitamin infused skin enhancer that quickly activates your visible glow, made to be used all over as a targeted liquid highlighter or mixed with foundation and skincare. So it's this, but a lot more expensive. Launches tomorrow on the app and then Tuesday online and in store. The thing about the Kosas stuff though, you'll have to tell me what your experience is, but people in the comment section have told me that they feel like their Kosas stuff goes bad pretty quickly because they are a very natural brand. Maybe their preservative systems are off a little bit and I would hate to spend $38 on a product and get like four to six months of use out of it. That would suck. Moving on to Danessa Myricks. This looks beautiful. These are the Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder Flushed. Matte colors for a lip and cheek. There are six shades that are going to be available, $25 each. They say it is a buildable soft matte formula that blurs and smooths cheek and lip with all day wear. In the What Else You Need to Know section, they say that it is a powder formula. It looks like cream to me, but they say that it's a powder formula and the video shows them applying it with their fingertips. In the description, it looked like you could could apply it with a blush, a brush, and then a do with your fingertips. So just when, if you decide to buy these, kind of play around with like blush, brush and fingertip, I always keep saying blush, brush and fingertip to see what application works best for you. Cause it looks like it might be a little complicated in there as far as getting the right pigmentation for you. Then we have Colfi expanding their line. This is the Mendy Moment Long Lasting Radiant Cream Blush, five shades, $28 each. Same release date as the Kosas. We have uh, tomorrow on the app and then Tuesday everywhere else. And then this one, oh my 
my gosh. Why hasn't anybody done this before? Again, never seen this before. So freaking smart. Fenty football theme products to get ready for the big game. Cause you know, you're allowed to say, you're not allowed to say Super Bowl in ads. It's like a copyright thing. You're not allowed to say it. So it is a specially packaged gloss balm in the shade Riri, which is a shimmering rose mauve. That's 20 bucks. And then look at this. It's a football shaped sponge. It's $16. It is so freaking cute. I mean, imagine you're at the Super Bowl party. You've got your, your chip and you're dipping it into what is it? The cheesy like bean dip stuff that somebody made or like the freaking buffalo chicken dip or whatever. And then you're like, you wipe your mouth and you're like, oh, I need to reapply my lip gloss. And then you put your Fenty gloss bomb with a freaking football on it. Are you serious right now? I think that's so smart. <laughs> I really do. Those two products launched on Sephora's website February 1st. But if you want it now, they actually have it available now on Fenty's website. Moving over to Ulta, just a couple of things. Dior, all the Dior stuff has launched. They've been teasing it for a while that Dior was coming to Ulta. It's all there now, all the makeup-y stuff. 41 new products for eyes, lips, and face. There's makeup and skincare and some new fragrance options and stuff like that. And then the last thing, I really shouldn't have ended on this, but I look, I almost don't even want to show this because it just makes me so irritated. So this is Kiko Milano's Active Foundation, 19 shades, $18.99 each. This is the shade range. It's 18 shades of white and one shade of brown. Like, what? what? How does this happen? Are there no brown people in Italy? Like, what is even happening? I don't get it. I don't get why this is happening. How are these that much different from each other? I don't understand. I legit just don't understand why. Like, do they, they just don't want people to buy the products? It's so weird. It's such a weird choice. All right, my friend, let's go into PR purchase product of the week. As you know, I'm on ColourPop PR. They keep sending me all of the stuff, so I keep trying it so I can show you. This is part of the new launch for their Target collection. If you did not know, ColourPop is now in Target. This is what is on my eyes today. This is the Fresh Greens palette. I wore quite a few of these on my eyes today. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six different shades on my eyes today. I'm going to swatch a few of them for you so you can see. We're going to do one swipe swatches. I should say one dip, not one swipe, because I'm just dipping in the pan one time, but sometimes they do need to be smoothed a little bit to really show the swatch. Ooh, I'm gonna get them all on my arm. Bloop, bloop. So that is one dip in the pan. Let me go ahead and build them. All right, got it. This is the two dips in the pan. So you can see the pigmentation difference when you do the two dips. So they do build. They start off, start off nice and soft, especially the matte ones, and then they build up. But I had a good time using them. As always, traditional color pop, pigmentation and ease of use and all of those things. On my lips today, I had lots of fun because the whole foil shimmery lip is coming back and I am so happy about it because then I can wear it without people saying, what'd you do that to your lips for? It looks so dated. Okay, so I used the Milani, this is PR2, the Milani shade Desire and I put that all over my lips and then I took the green shade right here and I tapped that right in the middle. I'm gonna put a little more because it's so freaking fun. Like how fun is that to just like make it a little more complicated? Like that's so fun. I love makeup. Makeup is fun. On my cheeks today from the ColourPop Valentine collection, I have the blush in Woomi and the highlighter in Heart of Gold. Notable sales this week we have from Dyson now through February 12th. This is kind of weird, so stay with me here. All customers who have previously purchased a Dyson product and registered it can enter their one-time promotional code to receive 20% off a new Dyson product of their choice. If you never got around to registering your device, you can do that by calling the phone number that is on the screen right now. It'll also be in the description box to talk to a Dyson expert to get your product registered. And just two other things, Bliss, buy one, get one 50% off on their website using code bliss up at checkout and then mac 20 percent off select complexion products uh including other face products like blushes and stuff we have made it to the artist shout out of the week and i would like to introduce you to dominic dominic is living currently in sydney australia and he is very very ridiculously talented let's go ahead and jump into his first look starting with this one that he calls alexa play flowers by miley how fun is this look 
oh my gosh. I love how he didn't just paint the flowers, like painting the gorgeous, the flowers are gorgeous, but it's that gradient base. Like what for them to sit on top of? Like, oh my gosh. And you can tell he has such an eye for the placement of the flowers. I'm honestly surprised he did those black tears going down. Like it makes the look as far as going with the song, but I would have been terrified to let that happen and have it get all messed up. I guess he could post it with, maybe took pictures before he did the drips just in case it did get messed up, but I'm just, the bravery, it's the bravery for me. Second look is called Taste the Rainbow, yeah? Another day, another graphic liner. Not only, okay, so not only are the rainbow lines absolute perfection, but the stars, the stars are so cute. I love that they're like little cartoon stars on the inner corner. What? That's so cute. All right, last one. I don't get the reference. You probably do. It's called Serving Water Bender Teas. I don't get the reference. I think that it's this though. I'll put it on the screen. I think that's the reference. <laughs> what makes Dom special, I think, out of a lot of people I talk about is that he doesn't just put the look on. He sets up that gradient base and then he pops the art on top and he makes it look so freaking effortless. The water droplets. How beautiful are these water droplets? I think the one by the bridge of his nose. I think that one's my favorite. <laughs> So I just started following him over on Instagram. As always, links to the artist shout out of the week are always in the description box down below. And that, my friend, was What's Up in Makeup this week. Thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, thank you to the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Their names are scrolling below me. Thank you so much for all of your submissions this week. I appreciate you oh so very much for taking time out of your day to submit things to make sure you don't miss anything. Our chat today is going to be at 10 a.m. Eastern time, talking about makeup, probably talking about what's happening in the community. I hope that you can join us. If you are subscribed, it is very easy to find. It should just be sitting in your subscription feed waiting for you. If you are not subscribed, it's a little bit more of a process. You gotta go to my channel page, you gotta click on my videos, and then you gotta click on the tab that says live. And that's where you're gonna find all of my live streams. They're wonderful to listen to while you're doing other things. I always read everything on the screen so you don't have to worry about physically looking at it as you're listening which I think is great format because I need things like that in my life. Thank you again so so much for watching What's Been Makeup. I know you could choose so many things to watch and I appreciate that you chose the show and I hope that you loved it. If you would like to hang out just a little bit longer YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch. The one on the bottom is last week's episode of What's Been Makeup in case you missed it the top one YouTube picked for you but if you do need to go it is no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. I will see you here next week. Mad love.